Hello everybody, Dr. Nigel here. Today we're going to talk about vitamin D and its effect on um, prevention and severity of uh, COVID-19 pneumonia. But before we go there, we're going to talk about some of the signs and symptoms of vitamin D deficiency. As you know, bone pain and bone loss is one of the most common and most known signs and symptoms of vitamin D deficiency. Another one is immune deficiency, right? Uh, so consider people uh, who get um, multiple cold and uh, flu bouts in a year and it's actually uh, increasing the length of the uh, uh, disease, uh, the term of the disease and that's why our immune system is not functioning properly and in most uh, cases uh, one of the reason is vitamin D de uh, deficiency because vitamin D deficiency is actually very common in uh, the whole population. Another symptom is uh, uh, fatigue and tiredness. Uh, when you wake up and you expect to be refreshed but you're not, one of the reasons could be uh, vitamin D deficiency. Also depression. Uh, some people have mild, moderate, and severe depression, and one of the reasons could be uh, vitamin D deficiency again. Uh, it could cause hair loss, vitamin D deficiency, uh, anywhere between, again, moderate uh, to severe hair loss, uh, depending on how severe is your vitamin D deficiency. Also, you could even have muscle pain, which is very important uh, to understand that one of the reason or one of the causes could be uh, vitamin D deficiency. Um, and then, uh, now we know what are some of the signs and symptoms of vitamin D deficiency, we're going to talk about uh, the sources of vitamin D that we can get uh, vitamin D from. Uh, so as you know, our body could build vitamin D through the direct effect of sun on our skin. Uh, but what are some of the foods that we can get vitamin D from? Well, salmon is one of them, herring uh, is another one. Um, so cod liver oil is highly saturated with vitamin D. Uh, mushrooms are a very good source of vitamin D. Uh, cereals and oatmeal, even orange juice could give you a good amount of vitamin D. Uh, cow's milk uh, for people who are not vegan, soy milk for people who are vegan, uh, are a good a source of vitamin D. Uh, now we know some of the sources of vitamin D, uh, we're going to discuss uh, the relation and the correlation between vitamin D and acute respiratory tract infection, which could be caused by COVID-19 virus, right? The, um, so in this uh, part, we're going to talk about um, the effect of um, vitamin D on different acute respiratory tract infections and for that reason I'm going to introduce uh, this uh, next study to you that has been done, uh, uh, it's already done in more than 11,000 people in 25 different countries uh, and it's really valuable. Uh, it's actually a systematic review uh, as you know, a systematic review is a form of study that uh, reviewing different RCTs or randomized contract trial, which is really important per se, uh, but when we um, uh, review multiple uh, RCTs, that would even make it a lot more reliable. Uh, in the next slide, I'm going to sh uh, explain uh, the, um, the connection between vitamin D and acute respiratory tract infection. This is an extremely valuable study published in PubMed, uh, which is a highly respected database, uh, showing that vitamin D supplementation uh, to prevent acute respiratory tract infection uh, was valuable. Uh, it's not just a randomized controlled tr trial, it's a systematic review and meta-analysis, meaning that they actually studied and reviewed 25 eligible randomized controlled trials. Uh, from different corner of the world and the eligibility criteria for study selection was randomized double blind placebo controlled trial of supplementation with vitamin D3 or vitamin D2 uh, of any duration in uh, patients with acute respiratory tract infection. 
they studied uh, more than 10,000 people, almost 11,000, and the p-value was less than 0 0.001, which makes the game extremely valuable. And if you scroll down and s you could see the, the concluded the vitamin D supplementation was safe and it protected the gains and acute respiratory tract infection overall. And patients who were very vitamin D deficient and those not receiving bolus doses experienced the most benefit. So those who are not receiving bolus doses. And if you scroll down again, uh, you can see the um, schematic of this uh, studies. As you can see, we have the uh, a vertical solid line and some blue boxes. Uh, all the blue boxes, each blue box represent a randomized controlled trial, which per se takes a lot of time for uh, scientists and researchers that, researchers that made that study. And it, uh, the blue boxes that on the left side of this uh, vertical solid line uh, shows that the vitamin D2 or D3 uh, were beneficial, was beneficial for patients with acute respiratory tract infection. And as you can see, most of these blue boxes on the left side. So that makes the vitamin D3 supplementation really valuable. So my recommendations in current pandemic uh, situation that we are dealing with is to take two to 4,000 international unit of vitamin D3, which is the most bioavailable form of vitamin D uh, in a liquid form, uh, which, is, uh, which gets absorbed uh, easier and faster uh, starting uh, the vasculature in your mouth, as opposed to the cap gels and uh, uh, capsules and the tablets. Uh, and for my children, uh, patients over 10 years old, one to 2,000 international unit, and of course less than 10 years old and over one year old, taking 400 to 1,000 IU or international unit of vitamin D3. That's my recommendation, especially in the current situation uh, that we are dealing with. And, um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you in my next videos as well. Thanks and have a great day.